Now we'll move on and look at the blood vessels and nerves of the hip region. We'll follow the course of the vessels and nerves from the inside of the body to the proximal part of the thigh. In the next section, we'll follow them on down to below the knee. To understand the course of the main blood vessels, the femoral vessels, there's a structure we need to look at that we saw briefly before, the inguinal ligament. And there's a space between muscles that we need to understand called the femoral triangle. Here's the inguinal ligament. It's a strong, tight band that forms the lowest part of the anterior abdominal wall. The inguinal ligament passes from the anterior superior iliac spine to the pubic tubercle. The inguinal ligament isn't an isolated structure. It's the lower edge of this large sheet of tendon-like material, the external oblique aponeurosis. The inguinal ligament is this part here. The fascia lata, which we've seen already, is attached to it along here. The gap between the inguinal ligament and the superior pubic ramus is occupied partly by the iliacus and psoas muscles and partly, as we'll see, by the femoral nerve, artery and vein and the inguinal lymph nodes. The other muscle in the picture here is obturator externus. Now let's add all the other thigh muscles to the picture and see the femoral triangle. Here the fascia lata has been left intact. Here it's been removed. The femoral triangle is the name given to this deep hollow. It's bounded by sartorius laterally, adductor longus medially, and the inguinal ligament above. In the depths of the triangle, pectineus, psoas major, and iliacus pass backward toward their insertions. Now that we've looked at the blood vessels of the hip region, we can move on to look at the nerves. We'll look first at the femoral nerve and the obturator nerve, which supply the front and the medial aspect of the thigh. Then we'll look at the gluteal nerves and the sciatic nerve, which supply the buttock and the back of the thigh. All the nerves of the lower extremity come from the anterior rami of the second to the fifth lumbar nerves and the first, second and third sacral nerves. To see where these arise, let's take a look at the lumbar spine and the sacrum. Below each vertebra, there's an intervertebral foramen. An anterior ramus emerges through each foramen. The anterior rami of the sacral nerves emerge from the anterior sacral foramina. Each anterior ramus is numbered according to the vertebra or the sacral segment that's above it. Here's the third lumbar vertebra. Here's where the L3 ramus emerges. We'll start by looking at the femoral nerve and the obturator nerve. This is the femoral nerve. This is the obturator nerve. This white structure in between is the psoas major tendon. Both these nerves arise from the lumbar plexus, which lies up here within the thickness of the psoas major muscle. The femoral nerve emerges lateral to psoas major the obturator nerve medial to it. We'll follow the femoral nerve. It runs across the iliacus muscle and passes under the inguinal ligament, just lateral to the femoral artery. Below the inguinal ligament, the femoral nerve breaks up into several branches. The femoral nerve supplies iliacus, all four heads of quadriceps, and also pectineus and sartorius. Now let's look at the obturator nerve. Emerging below the medial border of psoas major, it crosses the wing of the sacrum, then runs along the back of the ischiopubic ramus. It leaves the pelvis by passing forward through the obturator canal, just above obturator internus. To see where it emerges, we'll remove pectineus. Here's the obturator nerve, emerging over the top of obturator externus. Its branches run down between the adductor muscles. The obturator nerve supplies obturator externus, adductor brevis, and longus, and the anterior part of adductor magnus. Now we'll look at the two gluteal nerves, the superior and the inferior, and at the largest nerve of the lower extremity, the sciatic nerve 
which supplies the posterior thigh muscles and almost everything below the knee. The gluteal and sciatic nerves arise from the sacral plexus. Here's the sacral plexus. It's formed by the anterior rami of L4 and 5 and S1, 2 and 3. The sacral plexus overlies the piriformis muscle. This is the sciatic nerve. It arises from L4 through S3. This is the superior gluteal nerve. The inferior gluteal nerve arises out of sight behind the sciatic nerve. All three nerves leave the pelvis through the greater sciatic foramen. To see where they come out, we'll go round to the back and remove gluteus maximus. Here the vessels have been removed to simplify the picture. Here's piriformis. Here's the sciatic nerve. Here's the inferior gluteal nerve. And here's the superior gluteal nerve disappearing beneath gluteus medius. The superior gluteal nerve supplies gluteus medius, gluteus minimus, and tensor fasciolata. The inferior gluteal nerve supplies gluteus maximus. The sciatic nerve runs down the middle of the thigh. Deep to it are quadratus femoris and lower down adductor magnus. This is the long head of biceps femoris, which crosses over the nerve obliquely and covers it up. We'll follow the sciatic nerve further in the next section of this tape. In the thigh, the sciatic nerve supplies semitendinosus and semimembranosus, and also biceps femoris and the posterior part of adductor magnus. Lastly, there are a few hip muscles which have their own individual nerve supply. Psoas major is supplied by several small branches of the lumbar plexus. Small separate branches of the sacral plexus supply piriformis, obturator internus, and quadratus femoris. Now that we understand the inguinal ligament and the femoral triangle, we can move on and look at the blood vessels of the hip region, starting with a brief look at the principal veins. Almost all the veins in the region run parallel to arteries of the same name, so we don't need to look at them all separately. But there's just one important vein we do need to look at that has no corresponding artery, the long saphenous vein, also called the greater saphenous vein. With the main vein, there's a change of name that we need to understand. Below the inguinal ligament, it's called the femoral vein. Above the inguinal ligament, it's called the external iliac vein. It's the same with the artery. The vessels themselves don't change just their names. Here's the thigh with just the skin removed. The anterior superior iliac spine is here. Here's the long saphenous vein, which starts at the ankle and passes up the medial side of the knee and up to the top of the thigh. We'll remove all the subcutaneous fat to see it better. The inguinal ligament runs from here to here. Here's the fascia lata. Superficial veins from other parts of the region join the upper end of the long saphenous vein, which passes through an opening in the fascia lata, the saphenous hiatus. Here, near the top of the saphenous vein, are two of the inguinal lymph nodes. The main lymphatic vessels draining the lower extremity pass under the inguinal ligament here. To see where the saphenous vein goes, we'll remove the fascia lata and the underlying fat. Here are the main blood vessels to the leg, the femoral vein and artery. And this is the femoral nerve. The long saphenous vein ends by joining the femoral vein here. The femoral vein passes beneath the inguinal ligament. To see where it goes, we'll remove the abdominal wall, leaving just the inguinal ligament. This is the inguinal ligament this is the top of the pubis. Here, the vein is called the femoral vein. Here, above the inguinal ligament, it's the external iliac vein. It's all the same vessel. To see where it goes, we'll remove the artery. This muscle is the psoas major. The external iliac vein is joined by the internal iliac vein to form the common iliac vein. The right 
and left common iliac veins join in the midline to form the inferior vena cava. Now we'll remove all the veins from the picture so that we can look at the arteries. We'll look first at the internal and external iliac arteries. Then we'll look at the femoral and deep femoral arteries which supply almost all of the lower extremity. Then we'll look at the gluteal arteries which supply the gluteal or buttock area. Here's the abdominal aorta, dividing to give off the left and right common iliac arteries. The common iliac divides into the internal iliac and external iliac arteries. The external iliac passes under the inguinal ligament, emerging as the femoral artery. The femoral artery gives off two small branches and one large branch. The small branches are the superficial circumflex iliac, which runs laterally, and the external pudendal, which runs medially. The large branch is the deep femoral artery, which we'll look at in a minute. The femoral artery itself runs downward and passes beneath the sartorius muscle. We'll follow its further course in the next section of this tape. Below the point where it gives off the deep femoral, the femoral artery is often referred to as the superficial femoral. It supplies everything from about here downward, but the main artery that supplies the thigh is the deep femoral. To follow the deep femoral artery, we'll remove the femoral artery. We'll also remove the sartorius muscle and the femoral nerve. Early in its course, the deep femoral gives off two large branches, the medial circumflex femoral and the lateral circumflex femoral. It then passes behind adductor longus, which we'll remove. Here's pectineus, adductor brevis, adductor magnus, rectus femoris. The deep femoral artery runs down in front of adductor brevis and adductor magnus, giving off numerous muscle branches, including several which run backward through adductor magnus to supply the posterior thigh muscles. Now we'll go up to the internal iliac artery again to look at the gluteal vessels, which provide the blood supply for the buttock. The left side of the pelvis has been removed to give us a better view. Here's the internal iliac artery. Its branches which go to the pelvic viscera have been divided. Arising from it and a little discolored in this specimen are the superior gluteal and inferior gluteal arteries. They both pass backward through the greater sciatic foramen, one above and one below the piriformis muscle, which is here. To see where they emerge, we'll go right round to the back and remove gluteus maximus. Here's piriformis, here's gluteus medius. Again, all the veins have been removed to simplify the picture. Here's the superior gluteal artery, and here's the inferior gluteal artery, branching to supply the muscles of the buttock region.